Black's Law Dictionary, sixth edition is there. Okay. I recommend you get the fourth edition online, that's the best one. Okay. Um, and if you can't afford that one, because they make it like $100, you can get the fifth edition, which is only like 17 bucks. Okay. Or you can download a free one on riseofthemoors.org. Yeah, or you can go to my website, you can get a free PDF version, but I always recommend getting the books, because I think it's better, just to flip the pages. Um, so, when I was presented with, you know, teaching us about our rights, I figured all y'all were college students, right? Mm -hmm. So I figured mm -hmm. to grab your attention with this information, I talk about student loans. Now, also, um, with that other piece of paper that I passed around, I only have two copies. Uh, you, what you have right now is this one. This one is the actual, yeah, that's, that's case law. This is the actual presentation that I'm about to go through. Um, but for the other pages, uh, that's called res judicata, which is dealing with things already decided by previous court cases and stuff like that. Please make copies of that, because that goes into like, you know, um, in a lawful, unlawful arrest, it's considered an assault and battery. So if you get past the cop situation, once you get into the actual courtroom, you can argue, you know, whatever it is you need to argue as it relates to that arrest. But let's go into student loans. So student loans, what they don't want you to know, find me, next slide please. So to comprehend your rights regarding student loan debts, you should familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with res judicata. So again, if you want to study law, this is something that you're going to be using constantly. If you ever get a ticket, right, or any anything at all from the government, uh, they always reference things, right? They will say, you know, Rhode Island general law or whatever. That's res judicata. So they're referencing something um, instead of, you know, making long pieces of paper, 27 pages or whatever. So you need to know about res judicata. So res judicata is a principle or maxim in law that deals with cases already adjudicated, being already decided. In such cases, either quotes or the case itself is then used for uh, substantiating the accuser or defendant's proof of claim. So, you know, if you're arguing, um, you know, your right to travel as an example, or whatever it is you're arguing, you would base your argument off of previous decisions. That's all res judicata is, right? Uh, it's an expression of pre-existing rights, constitutional enforcement, the adherence to due process, or commanding the court to act on a matter, make a decision, or issue a judgment or decree in your favor. And this little Latin phrase right here, Aaliyah means and others. That's why I recommend you getting a law book, because most of the time when they hit us with these summons and these citations and stuff like that, they're referencing law, and they know we know nothing about that stuff, so we hire an attorney who doesn't even care about us. We just pay them, we get screwed in the courtrooms, pay the lawyer again, pay the court fee, and then we gotta do some time, right? <laughs> so res judicata or res judicata with an I. So when you're dealing with language, I, uh, J was an incident to the language until the 1500s, so before it was J, it was I. Uh, also known as claim preclusion is a Latin term for a matter already judged and refers to either two concepts. In both civil law and common law legal systems, a case which there has uh, been a final judgment and is no longer subject to appeal, meaning it's it's law, right? And a legal doctrine meant to bar or preclude continued litigation of a case on the same issues between the same parties and or similar situations. So this is kind of redundant, but I put it together so you can study this information. So next slide, please. So what is the res judicata regarding student loans? So when dealing with the res judicata regarding student loans, we must first comprehend a few principles or maxims of law, right? So number one is, the Constitution for the United States, specifically Article 1, Section 10, states that debts, in this case a student loan, which a student loan is a debt, right, can only be paid in gold or silver coins. How many of you do that? If none of you, right? I know you didn't. So this right here is a copy of the Constitution, and I'll show you right here, Article 1, Section 10, right? It says, no state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation grant letters of marquee and appraisal, coin money, emit bills, emit bills of credit, or make anything but gold and silver coin a tender and a payment of debt. So please pass this around. Because I'm, what I'm about to read to you is Article 6 of the Constitution, which states that the Constitution is, is the supreme law of the land, so any law that's contrary to that has no standing in the courtroom, right? It's considered unconstitutional. Yeah, <laughs> and anything uh, against the Constitution is unconstitutional. So this is Article 6, so feel free to take pictures of everything, right? So this is Article 6, it says this Constitution, Article 6, Clause 2, this Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made pursuant thereof 
and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land, which means nothing can go against this. Right? It's pretty simple. Uh, and judges in every state shall be bound by oath thereby. Right? So every judge in every courtroom is bound to that contract. So when the Constitution says only gold and silver coin can be used as a debt, they can't ask you for this as payment. Now we've been taught that this is money. Right? We've been taught that this is money. That's kind and most of the time, you know, when they say you owe student loan debt, they'll ask you for this stuff. Yeah. Is this gold and silver? No, no. So this is not what? Money. Right? So now when you go to the Black Souls Dictionary. <laughs> also, if you if also if you don't believe me, you don't believe anything I say. You know, Rhode Island Supreme and Superior Court, right? 250 Benefit Street. You go to the eighth floor, go to the law library, ask the clerk for Black's Law Dictionary. She'll take you up the stairs. I know exactly where it is. They'll go to the right. They'll have one, two, three. They skip the fourth edition because the fourth edition is the best one. Then they have five, six, seven, eight, all the way to ten because they don't want you to have this information. Wow. But yeah, in the in the. Uh, uh, that's why I'm telling you to drop this information off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go to the library. Remember, don't go to the left of all the other stuff. Go to the right at the Johnson Mills Library. Black Soul Dictionary, sixth edition is there, which they told my cousin it wasn't there before. And then when we went there the other day, it was right there. And they'll tell you straight in the law book, this is not money. Right? Also, just to add in, we have classes on this stuff every single Saturday at 12.30 right here in Providence. Yeah. Next slide, please. So, this is the definition of money from Black Soul Dictionary, fourth edition. Right? You'll see money... In usual and ordinary acceptation, it means gold, silver, or paper money. Now, when they talk about paper money, they're talking about silver certificates that's backed by gold and silver. Right? Gold and silver certificates, which this is not backed by anything, and does not embrace notes. Right? You see that, right? Does not embrace notes. Now, all y'all got some of this in your pocket, right? Take it out. What do you see on top of it? Okay, Federal Reserve note. 